In the age of technology, where love relationships often begin online, many people are fortunate to find their true destiny in real life. However, there are also unfortunate cases. The story we're about to tell serves as a warning to everyone. We hope that before falling in love online, everyone will carefully research to avoid bad situations. The story is about Ingrid Rounceville, a 40-year-old single mother living with her three young daughters, 10-year-old Noel, 8-year-old Brooke, and 6-year-old Reese, in Renton, Washington State, USA. Although divorced, she and her ex-husband, Phil Line, are still friends, so they can raise their children together. Ingrid, a petite woman with a lot of personality, works as a nurse at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle. Her greatest joy in life is being a mother to three daughters, whom she loves dearly and would do anything for. On April 8, 2016, Ingrid went on a date with a man she met online. The two planned to go to a baseball game together, and then they went to the bar. The next day, Phil took the children to Ingrid's house to deliver the notice. Arriving around 10 a.m., he noticed his ex-wife's silver 2015 Toyota Highlander was missing from its usual parking spot. Ingrid hadn't scheduled any work for that day, and since she was looking forward to the children's return, Phil doubted she would have gone out for any other reason. Getting no answer after repeated knocks and failing to reach Ingrid by phone, Phil decided to call his ex-mother-in-law, Jorga Base. Miss Jorga quickly arrived with a spare key. Entering the house, they found Ingrid's wallet, cell phone, computer, driver's license, and other personal items untouched. Yet, there was no sign of Ingrid herself. They knew she wouldn't leave without informing them. Miss Jorga contacted the police and Ingrid's friends and neighbors. A friend reported receiving a text message from Ingrid around 10.35 p.m. the night before, mentioning a date. A neighbor also mentioned Ingrid had recently been getting to know someone named John. Neither Jorga nor Phil recognized the name. Recalling their shared phone plan, Ms. Jorga checked the call records and discovered a frequent number with a Montana area code. This number belonged to a social media account for a man named John Robert Charlton. Jorga then texted John, asking if he had heard from Ingrid. She informed him that Ingrid was missing and the family had called 911. John replied that he had gone out with Ingrid the previous day, but they hadn't spent the night together. Later that day, six hours after Ingrid was reported missing, a man named Mike Novasio contacted the police. Mike lived about 16 kilometers from Ingrid's house and had been away from home for a few days. When he returned home on April 9th, he went to clean up the trash at the curb. Mike had left it outside when he was away because he knew the cleaning staff would pick it up on April 7th. As he pushed inside, he noticed that one of the crates was heavier than the rest. Mike immediately tipped it over onto the grass. There were three white plastic bags, and he immediately noticed something that looked like human body parts. Inside white plastic bags in a trash can outside his house, witness Mike Novasio discovered something that looked like human body parts. The bags were well wrapped and appeared quite professional. Police and medical examiners arrived at the scene immediately after the call. When they opened the trash bags, they found undecomposed body parts inside. Authorities were then able to easily identify the victim as the missing nurse, Ingrid Rounceville. Phil Line, the victim's ex-husband, was the first person investigated. However, he was quickly ruled out as a suspect. Next, the police questioned John Charlton, Ingrid's new boyfriend, who is believed to have been the last person to see her alive. Online dating profiles indicate John may not be interested in a serious relationship. Previously, at the victim's house, police found baseball game tickets on her computer dated April 8, 2016. The game took place at 7.10 p.m., and police believe Ingrid attended with John. John, who identified as homeless, met Ingrid online about a month ago. He acknowledged going to a baseball game with Ingrid. They went to a bar afterward and then John drove Ingrid home. John said he couldn't remember many details of what happened next because he was very drunk at the time. According to John, they may have been intimate. John claimed he didn't stay at Ingrid's house because her children would return the next morning. Ingrid doesn't want to introduce him to her children yet. According to John, it's because he's homeless. When police asked him what he did afterward if he didn't spend the night at Ingrid's house, John said he didn't remember, however, when he woke up the next morning, he was lying on the sidewalk in downtown Seattle. John assumed that Ingrid drove him here and did not know what happened to her after leaving. He sent a text message asking how Ingrid slept last night. John, who admits he doesn't consider himself typical, was found by police to be staying occasionally at his ex-girlfriend's house when not sleeping on the street. He described their relationship as romantic but very complicated. John then requested a lawyer. 
At this time, police executed a search warrant at Ingrid's house. Here, they discovered crucial evidence, including a box of trash bags that was nearly empty. These bags matched the ones found in the trash where Ingrid's body was discovered, suggesting they may have been used at the crime scene. Police also found a chainsaw propped up in the bathroom, with examination revealing blood, tissue, and bone on the saw teeth. In addition, blood was found in the bathtub drain. At the home of nurse Ingrid Rounceville, police discovered important clues, including a box of trash bags similar to the type found in the trash can where Ingrid's body was located, as well as a saw in the bathroom with blood, tissue, bones, and blood stains in the bathtub drain. Over the next few days, more of Ingrid's remains were found in trash cans and at a Seattle recycling site. The police returned to the victim's house. Removing the plumbing, they found more blood in the drain pipe. A blood stain reagent helped them identify evidence that the crime scene had been cleaned up. An autopsy revealed bleeding in the victim's eyes and neck. Ingrid had been strangled to death and dismembered in her own home. The toxicology report showed no drugs in her system, but her blood alcohol level was 0.074. A few days after Ingrid went missing, her car was found in Belltown, only a six-minute drive from the crime scene. Authorities discovered three fingerprints under the driver's side door handle. Inside the car, they also found white garbage bags similar to those used to wrap Ingrid's body. The comparison results showed that the fingerprints matched those of John Charlton, Ingrid's new boyfriend whom she met online. When police questioned John, they noticed scratches on his head, chin, chest, and arms, as well as a wound on his lip. Police continued to interview John's ex-girlfriend. She said John was supposed to come to her house on Saturday morning, the day after his date with Ingrid. John told her that something had happened, so he would arrive later than planned. When they met, she noticed that he had a swollen and injured lip. John said he was robbed of money, but his ex-girlfriend noticed that his wallet was still intact. John was arrested on charges of first-degree murder and stealing Ingrid's car. He pleaded not guilty. Investigating John further, authorities discovered he had an extensive criminal history in six states, including charges of aggravated burglary, attempted robbery, and assault. John's parents even filed for a restraining order against their son. This order was later rescinded. Learning from John's other lovers, the police also learned many other important details. Investigating further into John Charlton, the suspect in the murder and dismemberment of nurse Ingrid Rounceville, authorities discovered that he had a history of crimes in many different places. John's parents even applied for a restraining order against their son in 2006 because they feared for John's safety due to his drunkenness. An ex-lover revealed that John once strangled her while the two had sex. He continued to squeeze until she couldn't breathe. Another girl also told police John had confided in her that he had killed someone in Florida. John's friends said his personality seemed to drastically change whenever he drank alcohol and used drugs. He later admitted to police that he had a problem with alcohol. John's most recent girlfriend said they had known each other for about a year. Even though they had broken up, she still allowed him to leave his belongings at her house. During this time, John began dating Ingrid, whom he met through an online dating website. John once stayed at Ingrid's house for a few nights, but Ingrid kept their relationship private because it was still new. Friends believed Ingrid, a busy nurse with children, was looking for love on dating websites. Unfortunately, she ended up meeting the wrong person. Denying his sobriety, John claimed he was drunk after leaving the bar and returning to Ingrid's house. However, this contradicted the evidence found at the crime scene. The evidence pointed to John killing Ingrid, dismembering her body, and meticulously cleaning up afterwards. John was charged with first-degree intentional homicide and stealing Ingrid's car. He pleaded not guilty to both charges. The prosecutor admitted that not everything in this case can be explained. Meanwhile, the defense argued that there was no forensic evidence linking John to the murder. But then, just as the trial was about to begin, John surprised everyone by pleading guilty. This came as a shock, considering he had always maintained his innocence, claiming he didn't know what happened to Ingrid the night she disappeared. In Ingrid's own home, John savagely murdered her by strangulation. He then dismembered her body in the bathtub. Afterward, he placed the remains in plastic bags and loaded them into Ingrid's car. Driving to downtown Seattle, John discarded the evidence, callously tossing the bags into various trash bins. On January 5, 2018, John was sentenced to 27 years and 9 months in prison for Ingrid's murder. This verdict sparked outrage because it meant John could be released as early as 60, leaving many unsatisfied with the justice served. The motive for the crime remained shrouded in mystery, as some parts of Ingrid's body were never recovered. John's sentence for these horrific crimes has sparked debate. 
What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't miss our next story, another chilling case.